Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast, all about reinventing your health with safer, cheaper, more effective natural solutions and powerful lifestyle changes so that you become the CEO of your health. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder. A couple weeks ago, I ran a poll inside of one of my amazing Facebook groups. This was my group for the Essential Oil Hormone Summit, which just wrapped up. And I am so excited to share the details about the big wins, the fundraising efforts, and how much money we raised. Now in this group, we have about 16,000 plus women. And I asked them, what are you needing most on your hormone journey? And the top three things that my community of awesome women shared were, and this goes in order. Number one, stubborn weight. Number two, exhaustion. And number three, stress and burnout. Now, these three things I have personally struggled with myself on my own healing journey. And let me tell you, the struggle was very real. If I can be honest, Ensuring that I never felt bone-crushing, exhausted, and burned out with weight issues is the number one reason why I focus on my daily habits, my self-care, my nutrition, and my supplements every single day. It's why I take my thyroid medication. It's why eight hours of sleep for me is a non-negotiable. For two years, I addressed my weight gain and exhaustion as a root cause because I wasn't seeing the bigger picture. Initially, I thought I was struggling with chronic stress because of the symptoms of brain fog, fatigue, and mood swings. And I absolutely was, but there was more to it. Because after implementing those protocols, I still felt crappy and the weight didn't come off. I look back at pictures from two plus years ago and my face was so puffy and inflamed, but I couldn't see it. All I could do was focus on my weight and no matter how hard I tried to work out, the scale just continued to climb. No matter how much I tried to address the weight head on, I found myself back at square one over and over again. I wonder if you can relate to that. I learned the hard way that weight gain and low energy is often a symptom of something bigger. Have you been stuck at the weight loss merry-go-round circling and circling from one diet to the next? Have you jumped on the exercise train that seemed to work for everyone else, torture yourself for a week and just feel more tired? Have you tried everything, every supplement, every tea, every vitamin, every miracle available to keep from falling asleep in the middle of the day? I have been there, desperate for a solution and floundering in the darkness. No surprise, the missing piece was my hormones the whole time. Getting to the root cause and rebalancing your hormones and body is the first step on your healing journey, not the weight. Weight resistance is a byproduct of inflammation in the body. The question that we really need to be asking ourselves and our doctors more often is, what is causing the inflammation? I wanna quickly share six root causes to consider when trying to figure out what is causing inflammation inside of the body. I cover these root causes in more detail in podcast episode number 88 and 89. 88 is where I share my Hajimoto's journey and 89 is the interview with Palmer Kippola. We talk about how to beat autoimmune disease. Now here are the six root causes. Number one, stealth and latent infections. Things like viruses, parasites, mold, and Lyme. Number two is heavy metals. Number three is environmental toxins like pesticides, plastics, and petroleum. Number four is chronic stress, and we're gonna get deeper into that today. Number five is nutritional deficiencies, and we're also gonna talk about that today. Number six is emotional trauma. Today, we are gonna address one of the biggest root causes of fatigue and hormonal imbalance for so many of us. And then I'm gonna go and share my top 10 hormone-loving supplements for energy and hormone support to help you get that jump start. Supplements have been everything for me as of late in the last five years. I'm also gonna share with you a quick plan on how to reset your hormones in less than a month's time. One of the programs that I've mentioned here on the podcast is my 14-day hormone detox program. Now, I just finished this program with a group of 400 plus women earlier this month. And when I designed the program, I took into account hormonal imbalance, gut support, liver support, inflammation, and autoimmunity, because those are the big areas for us when it comes to getting our energy and our health back. And the 14-day detox is a game changer, not only for me, but for thousands of women who have done it. This is the program that I follow 100% of the time at this point in my Hajimoto's and thyroid healing journey because it addresses inflammation head on. 
I'm actually still on it right now because it has made such a big difference for me over the past year. Now I know that weight isn't the focus, but it can be an indicator of your body healing inflammation. It has definitely been mine. This year I've lost 14 pounds because I've been focusing on my hormone loving foods, the same foods that are highlighted in the program. Now, if you want to learn more about the 14 day hormone reset, it's an amazing jumpstart. And I'll have a link in the show notes for this episode, which is 138, or you can go to drmarisa.com slash detox. Now I want to take a moment and celebrate you. I am really excited to share this story of hope with you by Jessica from Instagram. Here's what Jessica had to say. I've had irregular periods for over two years and my doctor immediately recommended the pill which I didn't want to take, but I didn't know what else I could do. I recently heard your episode on the four types of PCOS and went to see my doctor and asked if he could run tests for PCOS along with tests for insulin resistance. And sure enough, the test came back. I have insulin resistance PCOS, and I would have never figured it out without your podcast. Thank you again. I'm so excited for your summit coming up, and I've been telling all my friends too. Well, thank you, Jessica, for sharing your win. I am so happy to shout you out today, and I am beyond happy that you finally got your diagnosis and you've got resources to heal your body. If you are listening, I would love to gift you a signed copy of my essential oil hormone solution book, Jessica, with a personal note from me. Feel free to reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram, girl, at Dr. Marisa, and we will get it sent to you ASAP. Now, if you are listening... And you want to check out that PCOS episode, it was episode number 132. This podcast is all about empowerment. And if it has helped you in any way, I would love to shout you out as well. You can reach out to me via Instagram or Facebook or by simply reviewing this podcast on iTunes or whatever podcast you love to plug into. That way I can continue to support more women, not just you, who are ready to step into their power and become the CEO of their health. Now let's dive into my top 10 supplements to master your energy and hormones. 90% of the time, I find that the main hormone that is out of whack is cortisol, which ends up disrupting other hormones too. Now your body makes cortisol in response to stress. And let's be honest, most of us are running around stress most of the time and our cortisol is completely off as a result. Now, chronic stress created by our modern life not only activates the stress response system known as the HPA axis, but it also turns on our survival system. And when we're in that state, it can become a very vicious cycle that leads to more stress and having damaging effects. The physical toll caused by increased levels of chronic stress can be extensive. The activation of the HPA axis changes the body's response system from short-term stress to long-term stress. And it increases blood glucose and free fatty acids in the system because we need those metabolic reserves. Now, consider this article from the Journal of Hormones in 2009 about stress. Chronic stress can lead to overeating, co-elevation of cortisol and insulin, and suppression of certain anabolic hormones. This state of metabolic stress in turn promotes abdominal visceral fat. Both direct stress response and the accumulate of visceral fat can promote a milli of systemic inflammation and oxidative stress. In short, researchers feel chronic stress response can create hormonal changes that may promote obesity, chronic disease states, and even increase mortality rates. And add insult to injury, stress in any form, whether it's physical, chemical, emotional, depletes your key nutrients, the building blocks of your hormones and cellular structures. That's why we're talking about key supplement needs to restore hormones and repair cellular healing. Some of the most critical nutrient deficiencies that I find in women with hormonal imbalance are going to be magnesium, B vitamins, especially B12 and B9, vitamin D, selenium, iodine, iron, ferritin, omega-3 fatty acids, and zinc. Now, since the root cause is usually the stress response system, the key is to reset it, starting with cortisol. Any other attempts at fixing hormones will likely fail in the long term if the wayward HPA access is not addressed. And this was 
very important for me in my Hajimoto's and thyroid journey because stress was a major driver of my thyroid dysfunction. Stress is a major driver in any dysfunction in the body. So here is a simplified protocol for becoming more objective about your stressors and balancing cortisol. All suggestions are proven in randomized trials, the best evidence that we have right now for helping to heal the body. So here we go. Number one, have your bestie on speed dial or better yet, meet up with her in person for a one-to-one session and a big hug. Let's definitely get those oxytocin levels up because they are a game changer for us. Next is practice self-care. I believe that self-care isn't always about bath soaks and spa days. I rarely do either. Self-care is about letting go of someone that drains you. It's about forgiving yourself for not meeting your impossible standards. It's about knowing you are worthy and deserving. Self-care is rarely a luxury. I believe that self-care is a non-negotiable for survival. Next is using calming essential oils. This is huge. Oils are one of the best things that I know and quickest things that I know to take you from a stress state to a relaxed state like that. It is so fast and effective. So my go-to favorite calming stress oils are going to be lavender, clary sage, vetiver, frankincense, citrus oils, jasmine, rose. Those are some of my favorites, and I always have them on me at all times. Next, if you can do it, get a massage or body work once or twice per month. We carry a lot of stress inside of our muscles and tissue. It's great to get that worked out. Limit alcohol and coffee. Ideally, switch to green tea because it contains L-theanine, which is an amino acid that reduces stress without feeling tired. You know how much I love matcha green tea and matcha lattes. I sub those out for coffee all the time. And lastly, it's extremely important that you supplement with key nutrients because as I mentioned earlier, stress depletes important nutrition inside of the body. So after researching supplement after supplement, here are the ones that I recommend the most often for hormone support to reduce stress levels, reset hormones, banish fatigue, and naturally support weight loss through insulin and thyroid support. Now I'm about to give you a pretty big rundown of these supplements and benefits. And before I get into this list, I also want to let you know that not all of these supplements are going to be right for you. It's worth finding out what deficiencies that you personally have or do not have along with listening to your body about what is working and what is not working. Since I know this can be a journey and a long one at times, in order to create a little bit of ease and grace in your life, I actually created a supplement cheat sheet guide so that you can refer to the supplement benefits and cited research. Now you can grab the cheat sheet in the show notes for episode 138 or go to my website for the supplement guide, drmarisa.com slash supplements. Now I created this guide because I just know how much easier it is to have this little resource at your beck and call whenever you need it, especially when you're looking into more supplements for your hormone journey. Now let's get started with number one. First to bat, probably one of my favorite supplements is gonna be magnesium glycinate. Hundreds of our body functions require optimal levels of this very, very important supplement. Deficiencies can lead to an increase of cardiovascular disease, infertility, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, depression, and it's frequently the root cause of migraine headaches. Now, no surprise that magnesium is needed to help support your stress response system and fight environmental threats. Now, one of my other favorite things about magnesium is if you take magnesium citrate, it actually helps you have more consistent bowel movements. It's just a matter of figuring out what the right dosage is for you. I always say start with a small dosage and work up, see how it goes for you with your bowel movements, and then you can adjust accordingly. Another thing to think about with magnesium is doing Epsom salt baths with essential oils as a part of your nighttime routine. It definitely will give you a healthy dose of magnesium. You can also do a magnesium oil. And we absolutely did an episode on magnesium with Gretchen Litiker. And I'm forgetting the episode, but it was one of my favorite ones to date. Gretchen and I go into a lot of detail about, here it is, it's episode number 113. I was able to find it on the spot. So that's definitely one you're going to want to go check out if you want to learn more about magnesium. I recommend about 300 milligrams per day, but maybe a little bit more if you're dealing with a deficiency, and a lot of us are. I take magnesium every night before going to bed. Number two, 
activated B complex. This is B vitamin 1, 2, 3, B6, B12, B9, all the B vitamins. I just say get a B vitamin complex. Make sure that it's activated or methylated because we want to make sure that it's working properly for your liver detox pathways. Now, the vital components of your overall bodily function is being ran by a complex of B vitamins, adrenal support, libido, fertility, reproductive health, menstrual health, I mean, name it. Your B vitamins are going to be a big player here. And as I mentioned earlier, two of the B vitamins that we tend to be low in is going to be vitamin B12 and B9. So I just recommend if you don't already have good, good quality B vitamins in your multivitamin, it's worth taking an activated B vitamin complex so that you ensure that you're supporting your hormones, you're supporting your reproductive system, you're supporting your menstrual cycle, and you're supporting your liver detox pathways. Number three is vitamin D. Many of us may not know it, but a lot of us are deficient in vitamin D, especially in the wintertime where we dip out of the sunshine. It's super important to be taking vitamin D every single day. It helps to support your brain, your neural pathways. It helps to boost happy neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. It's great for energy. It is great for, I mean, literally, there's so many processes that vitamin D are involved in. Now, some recommend to get sunlight 15 to 20 minutes a day, and I do think it's great to be outside and be out in nature, but honestly, especially in the winter months as we're approaching those right now, vitamin D, taking it as a supplement is going to be huge. I recommend at least, at least a thousand units per day. I take up to 5,000 units per day every single day. So it's just mainly finding out where you're at. You can definitely test for this as a nutrient deficiency. Find out where you are. If you are deficient, start with 5,000 units a day, and then you can go from there. Next is number four omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA. Now we know that these play an essential role not only in brain health and heart health, but also to reduce inflammation. Now the way that I love to get omegas is through fatty fish. I am a big lover of salmon. However, that may still not be enough for most people eating fish a couple times a week. So I recommend taking a supplement. We know that DHA plays a vital role in strengthening the brain and supporting a healthy immune system function. And we know that EPA impacts blood flow in the brain by reducing problematic inflammation. It also helps recover from traumatic brain injuries. Both are phenomenal for supporting the brain. And most importantly, they are necessary for our cell membranes and neural pathways and connectivity. So make sure that you're taking a good omega-3 fatty acid or that you're eating a lot of healthy fatty fish. Number five, zinc. Now, zinc is a wonder mineral for hormone balance. It's one of my favorite supplements that I recommend to women right out the gate, right behind magnesium and activated B vitamins. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about what zinc can do because a lot of times zinc isn't really talked about, but I love it and I take it every single day. Zinc is an effective treatment for acne, PCOS, period pain, and many other menstrual problems. It reduces inflammation and improves period pain because it's an anti-inflammatory, and it helps to modulate the immune system. It regulates our cycle by nourishing ovarian follicles and promoting ovulation. Ovaries absolutely love zinc. It blocks excess androgens such as testosterone. It's a great androgen blocker especially when dealing with PCOS symptoms like acne and facial hair. It helps to clear skin, again, acne. It supports the thyroid, so that's the reason why I'm taking it. Together with iodine and selenium, zinc is an essential part of synthesizing and activating thyroid hormone. It also promotes thyroid hormone, which in terms promotes better absorption of zinc. It's kind of like a beautiful cascade. And then last, decreases cortisol in the stress response system by supporting the limbic brain and the hypothalamus, which as we know, can dial down the stress response system because it's controlling the stress response system. I recommend zinc at a dose of 30 milligrams long-term, but if you are super deficient, you could pop up to about 80 milligrams short-term, and the best form is zinc citrate. Number seven, berberine. Now, berberine is a supplement that I also take every day. Actually, literally one through seven, I'm taking every single day just because they are phenomenal and they are critical for our hormone system, our energy, and our cellular vitality. Absolutely worth looking into these. 
Now let's talk about the benefits. Berberine decreases insulin resistance. It increases glycolysis, which helps break down sugar inside of cells. It decreases sugar production in the liver. It breaks down carbohydrates in the gut. It increases the number of beneficial bacteria in the gut. It's antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. It helps to reduce infections, especially in the gut. Remember, those are the big root causes for us. So it helps to fight bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. It helps to reduce built-up fatty liver. It's great for cardiovascular disease as well. And most importantly, what I love about it is, again, berberine can reduce inflammation, lower your blood sugar levels, improve your gut health, and protect your heart. Studies suggest that it has an array of other health benefits and minimal side effects. So definitely add it to your regimen. Number eight, ashwagandha. Prized as a Ayurvedic medicine, ashwagandha takes immediate action in your endocrine system to balance thyroid and adrenal glands. It is believed to thwart the production of stress hormones like epinephrine and cortisol that can rob our body of healthy progesterone levels. Anyone with thyroid issues should consider adding this gem to their arsenal. It is great for jumpstarting low libido, and it is wonderful for helping to rejuvenate brain fog, memory issues, lack of alertness. And for women with menopause, it is great for reducing hot flashes, depression, and anxiety that can sometimes come with that season in life. Now, I recommend taking 300 to 500 milligrams per day, but it's absolutely worth working with a doctor about this because not everyone's gonna respond great to ashwagandha. It really just depends on how your body responds. And it, it you'll know within a couple of months whether it's working or not. Number nine, rhodiola. Keeping the body in balance during a traumatic or stressful time can be difficult, but rhodiola is phenomenal for balancing your hormones. It simultaneously works to balance your overworked endocrine system by reducing the amount of cortisol to prevent burnout. It also prevents your thyroid from having issues as well. It keeps your thyroid happy. It boosts your mood. It also helps to reduce fatigue, and it's great for the HPA axis because it specifically works on the limbic system. It's a phenomenal adaptogen. And we know that less cortisol means less cravings, less binge eating. And what I also love about rhodiola is that it is phenomenal for cellular energy and reducing inflammation. So think about taking 300 to 500 milligrams per day. Again, worth discussing as an adaptogen, but I find that rhodiola works really well for people. Number 10, chaseberry also known as Vitex. Now, Vitex supports your pituitary gland to produce progesterone and luteinizing hormone, both of which are necessary for your body to ovulate, for regular menstrual cycles, and for you to avoid symptoms of hormonal imbalance like PMS. When a woman is progesterone deficient, like so many of us are, or estrogen dominant, to put it another way, and has been known to have a luteal phase defect, Vitex can support the endocrine system to create more progesterone, help ovulate regularly, and develop a healthy cycle. This will help balance out estrogen dominance. That could be the root to a lot of your issues with your cycle. The pituitary gland, as you know, is the master gland, which talks to the ovaries, letting them know how much hormone they need. Vitex works on the pituitary gland function to enhance its ability. Now, what I love so much about Vitex, most particularly, is in perimenopause and menopause on top of its amazing benefits for the menstrual cycle. So when you're entering the second stage of perimenopause and you're finding your cycles are becoming more irregular because at the beginning stage of perimenopause, your cycles are pretty regular consistently. It's over time that they get more irregular. And in those moments, Vitex can help regulate your cycle and help decrease the symptoms associated with perimenopause in your mid to late 40s. When you have PMS symptoms like acne and breast tenderness as a result of progesterone deficiency and estrogen dominance, Vitex can boost your body's production of progesterone and ease these issues. Now, Vitex is a relatively slow-acting herb, so you want to make sure that you commit to it for at least six months to see any changes in your cycle or improvement of symptoms. This is also a reason why this is not an easy treatment option compared to food therapy, as you have to take this herb every single day for a long time. And let's face it, it can be hard to remember. So it's important that you are consistent with the supplement to really see the results. Now, do not use Vitex if you're currently on the pill because it won't have any impact on your hormones because you're actually taking synthetic hormones to replace your normal hormone production. 
Now for symptoms for perimenopause and menopause and postmenopause, what I love is Vitex in combination with black cohosh. And that is going to bring me to number 11, my bonus herb slash supplement. Now, black cohosh has been used as a natural healing herb for a variety of health issues, but especially related to women with the reproductive system and childbirth. It has been found to support women dealing with PMS or menopausal symptoms, especially influencing receptor sites with serotonin to ease hot flashes and regulate hormones. This is mainly due to the estrogen-like response in black cohosh, which helps to increase low levels of estrogen that are prevalent in most menopausal women. It's said that even black cohosh may work as a natural hormone replacement. In addition to its potential for alleviating menopause symptoms, black cohosh is also believed to help other symptoms as well. It has been used to treat fever, musculoskeletal pain, pneumonia, cough, and even aid in sluggish labor. Other possible benefits have linked to preventing digestive issues, easing sleep issues, and alleviating PMS symptoms. Now, I recommend taking 80 milligrams one or two times per day to alleviate menopause-related symptoms or late perimenopausal symptoms. Now, I realize that I have just shared a lot of information on all of these amazing supplements and herbs, and I bet you're seeing that you are aligning with a couple of them that you may need right now. Now, if you want a comprehensive list of all the ones that I talked about today in one place, I want you to go and grab my supplement cheat sheet. I made it for you and it's an incredible resource to turn to and I know it will serve you when making decisions about what you need right now for energy, brain fog, hot flashes, and weight resistance. Thank you so much for stopping by and listening in to the Essentially You podcast. On our next episode, we are talking about how to eat to beat illness which is a topic that I absolutely love to talk about. I am bringing on Dr. Rupi, who is the host of The Doctor's Kitchen, which teaches people how to eat healthy to beat disease. I know you guys are gonna love this episode because it is refreshing and fun and it's all about food. Until the next show, have a wonderful day.